In this video, we're going to learn how to start a Godot project. And we're also going to learn a little bit about navigating the Godot interface. So you can see here, I have a nice clean desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and launch Godot. And if you haven't used Godot before, it's going to give us this warning. You currently don't have any projects. And I'm just going to click cancel because I don't want to see that anymore. What's left is a screen called the Project Manager which allows us to create, import, and remove Godot projects. At the top of this panel, you'll notice two tabs, Local Projects and Asset Library Projects. We want to be on the Local Projects tab, and we're going to use the buttons over here on the right to get started. To create our first local project, I'm going to click New Project. When you do this, a new window pops up, and Godot is going to be asking for three pieces of information the name of the new project, the path where the new project is going to be saved, and what renderer we want to use for that project. And you'll also notice that in red letters, Godot is warning us that our new project must be placed in an empty folder. So since this is session three, let's go ahead and name our project session three. Now we need to tell Godot where to save our project. This requires us to specify the project path in other words, where on my computer do I want this project to be saved? Now, by default, it's putting it in my personal directory on my computer, but I may want to change that. So I'm going to click Browse, and you can see here it's showing me a list of all of the files and folders in my personal directory, such as applications, desktop, documents, so on and so forth. I can select any of these, or if I wanted to go up a level in my file directory, I could click this up arrow right here. But I'm going to stay in the Hoffman directory, and I'm actually going to select Dex Desktop, because that's where I want to work. Once I know where I want to work, I'm going to tell Godot by clicking the Select the Current Folder button. Now that our project has a name and project path, we can tell Godot to go ahead and create the folder. This is going to be a folder called Session 3 on my desktop that contains all my project files. And you can see here the path to my project, Session 3. It's going to be on my desktop and it's going to be saved in a new empty folder called Session underscore 3. That's where Godot is going to save this new project file. And of course, if we look at our desktop, indeed, Godot has already created that folder for me. For now, we're going to leave the default renderer selected, and we're going to click Create and Edit. And now Godot is going to create our project and load up the main editing interface, which should look something like this. Now, let's take a couple of minutes just to get familiar with this interface, as it can be a little overwhelming at first. So let's walk through the basics. The first thing to notice is in the top left, we have the main menus, Scene, Project, Debug, Editor, and Help. Those will always be there and we'll learn when and how to use those over time. For example, if you wanted to close this project and return to the Project Manager, you would click on Project, Quit to Project List, and that would take you back to the previous screen. Now that we actually have a project, the project manager is already listing that project, so we can just double click it to open it back up. Now that we're back at our project, I want to point out the four main workspaces, 2D, 3D, script, and asset library. And we can click between these, and you can see the main workspace of the Godot engine changes when we click on these. In the upper right hand corner, we have a number of buttons, and we, these are our playtest buttons, which we'll learn how to use soon. Now, all around the outside of the main workspace, along the sides and the bottom, we have various information panels called docs. These docs all have specific names. So one doc is the scene doc. There's also a file system doc, which shows us some of the resources that are related to this project. Of course, there isn't much located here yet because we're just starting with a blank project. And then over here on the right, we have the inspector doc, which we'll be using a lot, as well as the node doc. One thing I want to show you is how you can reposition these docs by clicking on the three little dots associated with each doc. For example, I could actually move the node doc over to the left-hand side of the screen. 
You can also send that dock back or you can send them down so that the panel divides in half. These are all pre-programmed positions that allow us to manipulate where we want the docks to go. I also want to show you the output dock down at the bottom of the screen. And you can see here there's the output, debugger, audio, and animation panels. We'll be using the output and debugger docks a lot because they allow us to monitor what's changing in our projects and track down errors in our code. As you play around with repositioning docks, you may accidentally create a configuration or a layout that you don't want. If that ever happens, you can come up to the editor menu, come down to editor layout, and then just click default. This will reset everything for you back to the default locations. Again, that's editor, editor layout, and then default. Now that we know our way around the interface a little bit, let's see what else we can do. Now, most of the time we're gonna be working in 2D mode. So I'm going to come over here and click 2D. And the first thing that I want you to notice is this somewhat hard to see rectangle right here. Now, this is what's called the viewport. You can think of the viewport as a stage or a canvas for your game meaning anything that's within the bounds of this rectangle or within the bounds of the viewport is going to be visible. Now we can zoom in and out on the viewport by clicking these buttons. Another important thing, if I'm zoomed way out and I wanna jump back in so that the viewport is 100%, I can just click the number in the middle and it will automatically jump back to 100%, no matter where I was before. Another thing I can do is hold down the space bar and click and drag. This allows us to move the viewport around in the workspace so that we can get it to the position that is most suitable for our work. So this is called the viewport. Now, one of the questions that immediately should come up is, well, what is the size of the viewport? So let me show you how to determine the size of the viewport. I could try to figure it out by looking at the rulers here and here, but that's not very precise. What I want you to know is that by default, the viewport is 1024 by 600. In other words, it's 1024 pixels this way, and it's 600 pixels this way. These dimensions are actually a project setting that we can change for our specific project. So let's take a look at some project settings. To do that, I'm going to click on Project from the menu items, and the very first item I see in the dropdown is Project Settings. So I'm going to click that. And when I do, I get all kinds of settings that come up. And let's take a look at some of the things that we can set in Project Settings. The application, how it debugs, how it uses the network, how it renders things. But ultimately, right now, we're interested in the project's window settings. So if I click on window, I have all of these properties of the project window that I can adjust. And you can see here by default, we have a width of 1024 pixels and a height of 600. And I can change these numbers by clicking up or down or dragging along left to right. So I could make the viewport of our project look very different. I don't wanna do that right now, so I wanna keep it to the default but I wanted you to know that's where you set the width and the height of each project's viewport. Okay, so let's close out of here. There's one last thing that I wanna share with you, and that is how to change the theme of the Godot editor. Let's click on editor and come to editor settings again. Now in the editor settings, there's all kinds of settings I can change about how the editor works. Most of these we won't need to manipulate, but I did wanna show you how to change the theme of the editor. Now the preset theme actually is the default theme which comes with Godot, but there are several pre-packaged themes that you might prefer. You can click the drop down window here, and for example, you might like to use the alien theme. So by selecting the alien theme, it takes a second to process, but boom, you'll notice that the interface has changed colors. There are also some brighter themes that you might prefer. For example, I might choose the light theme. And again, once it's selected, it will take a minute to load and boom, it will apply the new theme. This lighter theme looks much more like a typical Apple software application. And again, this is just personal preference. For now, let's just keep the default setting, but I wanted you to know that you can change the editor in that way. Okay, that concludes this tutorial on starting a Godot project.